Yeah, like, you, ever, you ever see the knockdown of Reggie Johnson? He throws a one-two <sighs> in between Reggie Johnson's one-two. Yeah, in between the punches. <laughs> so I, 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 Reggie's I, throwing I a one-two, young guys, and he throws a one-two and then slips at the same time. <laughs> Like, we, like, Paul, you always talk about catch and shoot. Mm -hmm. Like, he beat the guy's punch to yeah. him. He's a, he, his opponent, uh, Reggie started the punch, and he goes, I can get there quicker. <laughs> it's yeah. like crazy. Yeah, he, he saw was, it, he recognized it, fired it. Really feel it's my time, think it's my... Yeah. I am George Jakovic alongside the champions, Chris Algieri and Pauli Malinaji. This is sparring session. I've got the bow tie on, so it's time for me to judge and ref. Chris and Pauli go at it for five rounds. They discuss, debate, we score, well, I score these rounds and we determine the winner. Chris Algieri is the defending champion. And uh, Pauly, you, you look like you're hungry to get your title back. You were literally eating right before we started to shoot. So a little cocky, a little confident. Huh? Yeah, yeah, too, too much hot sauce though. But it, it, got, me, it got me riled up. I'm ready, I'm ready, to, fi I'm, I'm ready to fire off right now. Okay. Got spicy today. I so steak and eggs. So, 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 you know, I'm, so, I'm feeling, feeling Steak strong. and eggs. That's like so, a, a traditional, like, boxer's, like, steak, protein. And I was doing the Rocky sauce. Marciano. I was chewing the steak and then spitting it out. <laughs> just, just getting the vitality out of there. But, you know, the, you know what's funny about that? Uh, Marciano didn't have to make weight. He was a heavyweight. You know, they, the, an old-timer in Gleason's gym told me to do that when you got to make weight. Would be spit the take, chew the steak and then spit it so you don't put the weight on. <laughs> so you, you well, I'm sure you didn't chew. You, I, I'm sure you didn't spit your food out, Paulie. But I'm sure you're ready for this, right? Chris is the defending champion. I'm, spit, I'm spitting out victories two. today. That's it. All right. Well, I've well, had Paulie, enough of this. Know, uh, I've had enough of coming up short. The the Vegas odds makers and the writer of the show they all say you're due for a win. So yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. Mm. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So, uh, Chris, you are the defending champion. I'm going to assume that Paulie is going to start and you'll alternate rounds. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah that, that. <laughs> you know what's crazy about these, 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 these subject matters? Sometimes it's advantageous to go first and sometimes it's advantageous yeah. to go second. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes well, this, it's good this to finish, one, sometimes it's good to start. This one, it is ad advantageous to go first and I'll explain why. Paulie, you're going to start. The, the topic is best division in boxing and why and the caveat to this is you can't agree so whoever goes first whatever Polly says chris you can't agree with that you have to pick another weight so this is so like, Polly, like, you're gonna this, start it so this is like what i did the other day where i didn't think canelo was gonna be calzaghi but i had to just argue on his case anyway there you go all right this, round this, one this is, this is now, a we're debate show, now we're really so. now we're really playing lawyer <laughs> round one Polly starts at best division in boxing ring the bell round one 140 pounds is one, 140 pounds is the best division in boxing. What am I going to tell you? It's got guys that are bona fide 140 pounders that are top level, and it's also got the 135 pounders that are moving up to 140 pounds as well. And also, you got uh, hybrids like uh, Javante Davis, who at times may shoot up to 140 pounds and come back down at 135. You got big, big names. You got marketing stars. So you got the marketable guys such as. Uh, Ryan Garcia, you got even Adrian Broner can be like a hybrid where he maybe can come back down to 140. He becomes a big name you throw into that mix, even though we don't, we don't have a lot of confidence in Adrian's ability to make 140. His name still comes up in the mix. And you've got bona fide top stars. You got uh, Tofimo Lopez. You've got uh, Devin Haney. You got Shakur Stevenson, who's probably coming around the corner. You got guys like Jack Catterall, who's uh, sort of a, a on that on that edge and has given uh have shown himself to be top level i mean you've got uh subriel matias you've got i mean you can sort of just keep going you've got a bona fide top 10 that is stronger Break. than any weight class until shakur stevenson moves up to 140 135 pounds is the best division in boxing right now you've got javante davis you got shakur stevenson that is the biggest fight that can be made right now uh, in, in any where two guys are in the actual same weight class. Yeah, we, we want we want to see Devin Haney and, and, and Shakur. Yeah, we want to see Devin Haney and and Gervonta. But one of, that means Gervonta has to move up. Sure, he's fought there at 40, but he's at 135. He is a 135 pounder. Um, there's it's 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 a deep division. You got Murataya who's breaking onto the scene. You got um, the, the Mexican from uh, from Golden Boy, who is uh, who is really fun to watch and could fight with all those guys. Um, then I'm trying to think who else we got with 35, uh, 35 is deep. And yeah, those guys will eventually move up, but that's what 35 always does. Um, but right now the best fights that can be made, the highest level guys. Yeah. Ryan Garcia has got name recognition. He's not Shakur Stevenson. He's not Javante Davis. And we know that obviously he got knocked out by him, but the best guys right now are 135. Break. 
You know, it's, uh, the thing about the, the being the best weight class is also the, the amount of depth. You, there's not enough depth at 135 to compare to 140, you know. And also, Tofima Lopez is, prob is probably the next best guy behind Shakur Stevenson, and he's a bona fide 140-pounder. Also, you mentioned the fact that guys come from 135 to 140, but a lot of these 140s aren't really going to go to 147 if you look at it. Haney just got to 140, so he's not going to move to 147. Lopez is probably is, is going to stick around at 140 because he just got to, to 40 not that long ago. You know, these guys are bona fide 140-pounders that, and, that are going to stay. Stay. Yeah, no, I mean, sh yeah, they're going to stay, but the, the, the biggest fights that can be made right now are at 135. And you talk about depth. I just mentioned two other guys that could potentially be with all those top guys. When Ataya just came up, he's right there. You got a guy like Cambosis, is a former former undisputed champion. He's still around. You know, he's not the most talented guy in the world, but he can be with all those fights. Lomachenko is still at 35. He's, he's still fighting. He's not going to fight at 40. So 135 is the deepest division and the most talented. All right, guys who can't pronounce Lo guys who can't pronounce Lomachenko's name should automatically be deducted points. He's not a lemon. It's not Lemonchenko. It's Lomachenko. Hey. There's no end. Hey, Malinaji, no Malinaji, Malinaji gets his first warning. You don't tell tell me how to judge. Don't tell me how to rap. That's a warning. But Paulie won that round ten nine. I think uh, Gary Chris, Gary calls good it Lomachenko argument, too, But, but one forty is just deeper. It's a deeper division. And Paulie, guys, races. guys, everybody at home. Just pronounce it Lomachenko. It's like a pet peeve I have. People say there you Loma, go. People say I don't Loma even know. I, have, did, I said Lemon. What did I say? No, Lomachenko? Lom, Lom, I don't even You might have said Lomachenko, but a lot of people say Lomachenko instead of Lomachenko. They, they add the end. Well, his, they, nickname is, his nickname is Loma. Lo, so Loma. It's, it's obviously Lomachenko. All right, Loma, guys. Lomachenko. We're going to keep this but guys, moving. Hold on, hold on. Because want, people put add the end before the Chenko. <laughs> people say Wait, Lomachenko. All right, before, George, can I, can I, can I, can I gracefully and, and respectively <laughs> ask a question? Yes, you can. Could we get the rules before we start? Because if, if I knew that center, we couldn't have the same weight class, I would have picked, picked first. I'd sent the ring and in the dressing room. You know, the referee has to come in the dressing room and, 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 and tell us Jeez. these rules beforehand. I decided to go first, and then you tell me it can't be the same. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> well, that, that's why in the future you should think before you, you know, I, I think a little surprise is good for this. It's good for your ref, brain. Ref. Round of applause. 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 Round um, you know, what, what first comes to mind is most real, uh, recent guys, and I mentioned him yesterday on today's show, Sir, uh, Sergey Lomachenko, um, Sergey Lomachenko, Ser Sergey Derevinchenko is a friend of mine. You know, he's been in with great fighters and he's been around for so long. You always expected that he would be a world champion. He's not a world champion. Another guy that I work with very closely is Sullivan Barrera, who's never been a world champion. He's a world amateur champion. Never, uh, didn't get to go to the Olympics because uh, of some out of the ring issues. Never won a world title as a pro. Super, super talented guy. But... The best guy in the world in history who's never been a world champion who deserved it is Sam Langford. He beat Joe Gans. He beat Jer he mm. beat Joe Walcott, not Jersey Joe Walcott. So a lot. I'm going way back for that he went one. Way but back. like he's one of those guys. He beat multiple world champions. Guys who literally had the title at the time. They just fought non-title fights back then. And Joe and Jack Dempsey said, "I'm not fighting that guy. He would knock me out." Break. You know, I see the politics being played here. I see that you know our referee likes the the, the, the classics, and you went deep with Sam Langford. Okay, I'm going to say in my generation, it's Andre Durrell. I, Andre Durrell was um, unbelievably talented. From my generation, the most talented guy I ever saw personally never win a world championship with Andre, Andre Durrell. After being in the amateurs with him and seeing him in the pros, incredible talent, super talent, never won a world title. But since I know and understand what our referee likes, I'm going to go with Howard Davis. Howard Davis was the Olympic gold medalist in 1976, the outstanding fighter of the 1976 uh, Montreal Olympic Games uh, and Olympic Games that had the Spinks Brothers and Ray Leonard but Davis won the Outstanding Boxer of the Tournament Award and never won a world championship. I believe he challenged for two or three world championships in his career. Never won a world championship and Chris you're ashamed you should be ashamed of yourself. He's from Long Island and I had to come up with Howard Davis not you. That's another uh, strike against you. Uh, Howard Davis Jr. is my pick. The best fighter to never win a world championship with respect to Sam Langford. Howard Davis Jr. Break. 
Well, I got to make it competitive, bro. I can't throw everybody out there. I'm going to name every single guy. Daya Davis is a friend of mine. He lives around the corner. He's got Boca Boxing District around the corner. Great, great fighter, Long Island guy. Uh, very, very good fighter to, to never win a world title. But come on, dude. Sam Langford, he beat he bit actual world champions. And the champion of the world, Jack, Johnson, uh, Jack Dempsey, said, I don't want to fight that guy. I didn't fight him. He would have knocked me out. That tells you right there. That, that guy should have been, could have been, would have been a world champion. Never got his shot. Beat the guys who were there. I mean, it, it's... Break. Uh, Good one with that, with, with uh, Aaron, though. Break. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with Howard. I mean, how, again, outstanding boxer of the 1976 Olympics. I mean, Sugar Ray Leonard is people, some, some people say Sugar Ray Leonard is the best fighter ever. I mean, and this guy in the Olympic Games was nominated above him as the outstanding fighter of the tournament. I mean, Charlie Burley is also in one for respects. If you're going to mention Sam Langford, I can, I can up, your, up your Sam Langford with Charlie Burley. But I'm sticking with Howard Davis Jr., best fighter to never win a world championship. There's our bell for round two. Wow, uh, Chris, you went you went way back, and that's like kind of the consensus. If you look this up, Sam Langford is up at the top. But uh -huh. I watched Howard Davis lose one of those title fights. I believe it was against Edwin Rosario. I thought he was winning the fight. He got dropped dropped in the last round. He lost a decision. So, Pauli Malignaggi has taken a two point lead. He's up by two points after two rounds. He is hungry. He was eating right before we shot. He's hungry. Chris, he wants his belt back. He he talked about me following politics. He went. He, he didn't go for the right answer. He went for the one that the ref likes. I get it now. I get it. <laughs> but, 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 yeah, he went for I, the ref's error instead, re, re, instead re, of the re, truth. Ref, on, on, a, on, a, on a same but different note, with, did, was I right about Burley in terms of he never won a world title either, right? I don't think Burley won one either. I think you were, you were right with that. Man, but listen, know. make sure you download the app. Go, go subscribe on YouTube, but you get more when you download the app. Click on the link in the description. You get so much more. Everything a boxing fan wants and needs, like shows, like this one right here, sparring session, where Pauli Malignaggi has a two-point lead going into the third round. Pauli, you are starting round three. Now, you have to listen to this. I know it says PBC up there, but PBC, there, there's a lot going on with them. We hear, you know, Netflix is now supposedly in the running. If you were in charge of PBC, what would the best course of action for them to take? What would it be? You guys understand the question? Network TV! They rang the bell. Network TV, Network TV, make a deal with Network TV. Bring the fights to Network TV. The fighters might have to take a little bit of a pay cut, build themselves up to superstar power with those Network TV fights, and then all of a sudden you wind up at uh, on pay-per-view for the major, major fights. Bring it old school, the way boxing was when it became the big deal. Make the fights where people can watch them, and then if there's a major, major fight between two superstars that you've now created off of this platform, then you can make it on closed circuit or pay-per-view. Pay-per-views now are just one guy who's a major star against anybody, even the guy that washes the windows here at the office. Doesn't matter, it's pay-per-view because the one guy is always involved, right? No, pay-per-view is supposed to be two guys. Both guys have to have that star power, and the way you do it is through network TV. With a little bit of uh, uh, asterisk, we can always sort of go with ProBox. You can always bring everything here if you want. You know, ProBox TV is always something you can always bring the fights to here. We do have the best Wednesday Night Fight series on the planet. But nonetheless, um, break network TV. Now, now, when you want it, when you say, you know, the best route of action, do you want it to actually be successful or do you want to just like go back in time and, and, and pretend that, that that's Ooh. still going to work? Network TV is not going to work. The future is here. I know you're an old head. I know you're, you guys are all old school. I know you're dinosaurs. I am too. But listen, network TV ain't it anymore. That's, it's not going to work. The, the premium, the premium movie channels are done. Everything is streaming. The future is streaming. The ability to watch everything on your phone is now. So no, you gotta go. You gotta go with streaming. I think Amazon Prime is probably the best bet because there's going to be the most people that have access to that. Who doesn't use Amazon to order stuff? Who do, who can't just add a little Amazon Prime su su subscription onto their onto their membership and be able to watch these fights? And you could do add-ons on top of that. You could do pay-per-views. That's what everybody does anyway. That's where the future's going. Um, man, I don't even have cable. I don't have any of any any access to to network TV anymore. Everything's on apps. So uh, yeah, no, apps are the way to go. Uh, gotta let the dinosaurs die. Break.
well, you know what? I'm going to see your stream and I'm going to raise you. I'm going to go network TV and stream because just like Showtime is doing at the end of their tenure where they had the stream and they also had the network, the, 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 the TV station. You can do this with the network stations as well. Listen, ABC, NBC, CBS, I'm sure you can have a, 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 a legitimate combination where there's a stream and also they're on the network. So you can go with either or and so you can watch it either from your phone or in your living room on network TV. Even with the bunny ears, you wouldn't even need cable if it's network TV. This is what I'm talking about. Network TV Great. combined with the stream you know when a guy's back in a corner when he takes his idea and adds it to your idea that's what he just did <laughs> come on you are, oh never tv never tv is the way to go but yeah you do i never get an end streaming but yeah, see, now we're just adding it together come on man let's let's be realistic Net, the, the networks are probably not even going to be around soon and the the, the lo longest most successful way to do this is to have it go with the streaming platforms which everyone is and there's going to be there's no lack of streaming networks i have them all it's easy to watch you can you can combine Chris, the two. I mean that's it's, Chris it's Algieri. The way. It's the way. Chris Algieri has come roaring back. He scored a knockdown in that round. It's a 10-8 round. <laughs> it's an even fight. How is that Tony, possible? You can't, you can't <laughs> combine. To play my you emotions. Can, you can't. Tony com thought I would think the networks were the way to go, and I don't. I agree. You can't, Chris, you can't combine. Fire. You can't I combine. I knew you were doing that. Machine. I knew you. I knew you were going because you, you know George is gonna be like, oh, network television. That was the best. <laughs> <laughs> I knew and it, it backfired this time. But I don't that understand. That was a 10 round. I don't track. understand though. We network. I mean, that is the best course of action. And you. I mean, can you combine network and stream? I mean, you could do that. That? Who said you can't do that? You can do that. Paulie, you lost that round big. You lost that round big. You know what? Real quick on the whole Showtime thing, it's sad that Showtime is gone, but I'm kind of excited because you keep hearing, you know, Netflix is supposedly in it, Amazon Prime. I mean, I'm kind of excited to see where it's going to go because we do know PBC has all those fighters. They're not going anywhere. They have to fight somewhere. So I'm kind of curious to see where they're going to go. All right. Round four. Chris is starting round four. Last week, we talked about a fantasy fight between Canelo and Joe Calzaghe. This week, Roy Jones and Andre Ward at 168 pounds. A dream fantasy fight. Chris, you're going to start it. Ring the bell round four. Absolutely a dream fight. I mean, two absolutely incredible fighters, guys that we we, we literally look at the best of our generations. Um, two guys who were at the time, you know, they could think, they could punch, they could they could set things up. Um, they knew how to go the distance. I mean, everything. What a what an incredible fight, incredible matchup, incredible thought thought experiment to think about these two guys in the ring. But I got to go with my guy Roy Jones Jr. because he it, it's just he, the man was so special, so special for for a, a long period of his career. He didn't have those marquee opponents. I mean, he beat James Tony at 168, which is which is huge. James Tony is another Hall of Famer, incredible guy. But an Andre Ward fight could have been that fight. And he had beaten a thinker in, in Bernard Hopkins at 160 weight class before. So it makes me think that he would be able to use his athleticism, his gifts, his physical talents, which were higher than that of Andre Ward, um, to beat out the thinking st strategy that, that Ward would bring to the table. But absolutely incredible matchup. Would not have been an easy fight. Very, very good fight. Great. Right. All right, you're going to go with Roy. Uh, I'm going to go with Andre. I'm going to go with Andre. Andre hadn't lost a fight since he was 12 years old. Uh, never lost again. Um, also, Andre, people uh, underestimate Andre's uh, athletic ability. Yes, he was a thinking fighter, and a lot of times he was uh, a little bit more stationary and whatnot in certain spots, but I saw Andre win the U.S. Championships when he was 17 years old, and he was he won it on pure athleticism, and he was a, a very good athlete as well. Uh, he just didn't always translate it into the ring because a lot of times, especially as a pro, he started to bully you and be physical with you as well and try to get in your mind in other ways. But I think I, it just goes, it's a testament to the different levels of Andre's boxing that he had. A lot of times he didn't have to show you his whole repertoire. Uh, Roy is an unbelievable talented guy. I think from the talent perspective, uh, you know, maybe the best ever. And, and it's hard to pick against him. But I think if you can start busting him up and, and mix it up just the right way, because, again, Hopkins tried to bust him up physically, and that didn't work either. So you'd have to mix it up just the right way. And Andre's intelligence, that we're talking about his intelligence, I think he might find a way to Great. balance it all out. Yes, and I'm, I'm going to agree with your your assessment of Ward's athleticism. I, I wasn't saying that he wasn't athletic. I just was comparing it to Roy in uh, in, in, in that perspective. And Roy is just otherworldly. The, the, the guy was pretty much an alien when he was at his best and at those weight classes. He was also big for 68. He was strong. He had power. And I think that was really differential between those two is going to be the speed and the power. Very, very difficult to overcome just with thinking, especially because Roy thought back then, too. He was a very good thinker, very fast thinker. The speed of thought and, and movement Break. was incredible.
Yeah, but Roy was very, very heavily dependent on his athleticism. He was so good, but he was very athletic. And as, as Roy's athleticism diminished as he got older, he started getting caught with the shots he would have now caught, got caught with in the past. And you found out that his chin wasn't really that great as well. Remember, I remember uh, uh, Dawson, uh, I, I mean, Ward fighting Chad Dawson. And, and Dawson was a very athletic guy and how Ward dealt with that as well. Not to say that Dawson is Roy Jones, but again, you can see how Ward makes the adjustments with the physical guys like Cole Blevin and the athletic guys like Dawson. Chris Al, Jerry's taking a one-point lead. Uh, Pauly, I, I think in your heart you think Roy would have won, but I think you did the, the smart thing and yeah. you took Andre. So for me, I'm just saying yeah, for me. Yeah, I, I don't think there's really a right answer, but I would probably lean towards Roy. But, yeah, I mean, I had to go the other way, and I think there's an argument for both because it's such a good fight, you know, so I was but like, it, right, It's I'm a great close. fight, and to, to me, Roy Jones was as close to unbeatable in his prime as a, a fighter yeah. as I've ever seen. So yeah, this I mean, would be that's the only fight. reason. that's the only reason I picked Roy. Yeah. Because honestly, I, I if you ask me tomorrow, I I, I might pick Ward. Um, yeah. But Roy, because he was so unbeatable for a specific portion of his career, which is when at, at that time, yeah. um, I mean, he he was able to do things that none of us have ever seen. I I don't I ever I don't I don't know if we're ever going to see a, a Roy Jones Jr. again. Yeah, you, ever, you ever see the knockdown of Reggie Johnson? He throws a one two <sighs> in between Reggie Johnson's one two. Yeah, in between the punches. <laughs> it's so crazy. I, 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 Reggie's I, throwing I a one two, guys, and he throws a one two and then slips at the same time. <laughs> Like, we, like, Paul, you always talk about catch and shoot. Mm -hmm. Like, he beat the guy's punch to yeah. him. He's a, he, his opponent, uh, Reggie started the punch, and he goes, I can get there quicker. <laughs> it's yeah. like crazy. Yeah, he, he saw was, it, he recognized it, fired. Amazing. You know what else is amazing? Probox TV. Subscribe on YouTube. Download the app. There's so much more on the app. Click on the link in the description. You've got all the fights, all the, <laughs> excuse me, all the great fights in the past that we've had on Probox. You've got news. You've got talk shows. You've got everything that a boxing fan needs on the app. So make sure you download it. Listen, uh, Paulie, in, in, in the words of Angelo Dundee, you're blowing it, son. You're blowing it. You won the first two rounds. Chris Algieri came storming back, knocked you down in the third, took the fourth. You're down by a point. Paulie, you're starting round five now. I know what you see up there. It says best boxing movie ever. But there is a little rule to that one, too. What's that? It I cannot mean, be Raging these, Bull with these or the caveats. Rocky movies. It cannot be what? It cannot be Raging Bull or the Rocky movies. Damn, are you going to be on a spot like that? That's crazy. I can't be. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's keep adding more movies. That can't be this. It can't be that. It can't be the other one. That's crazy. It, it, it's crazy, but it's the rules. Paulie, round five, the best boxing movie ever besides the Rocky movies. I don't know. Or Raging Bull. Ring the bell, round five. I'm going to go with uh, Gladi. Oh, no, you know what? I'm going to go. I was going to go with Gladi. But you know what? Cinderella Man. Cinderella Man is a very, very good movie. It's a true story. Uh, heartfelt. Pulls out your heartstrings. I like boxing movies that can be boxing movies, but also movies about life in general. Those, are, to me, those wind up being the best boxing movies. When there's too much of an onus on just the boxing, it ends up getting lost into just a niche movie. You know, but when you, you're able to make a movie that has boxing in it, but also is about life, then I think it, it creates a, a, a sort of a crossover appeal to a lot of people because people also get caught up in the and the gripping life story. That's what Rocky was. That's what Raging Bull was. And that's what I think Cinderella Man does for you as well. Plus, it's a it's a great era. It's a bygone era in boxing. Uh, James Braddock was an underdog story in a bygone era in boxing. Depression era of, of, of life, not just boxing. So people can relate to the struggle in life in general. And, of course, uh, Braddock, really, uh, the, the name of the movie Cinderella Man really... Uh, holds true you know he, he has a Cinderella story where you just keep seeing in the movie how you just never really feel like he's gonna get this break and get this break and something break. always gets in the way great movie Cinderella man great movie that was actually the movie I was thinking about and the only reason I'm picking the one that I'm picking is because I had to do this on my podcast like a year ago best movies the movie the setup 1949 we're going way back once again this movie is awesome it is the prototypical manager screwing his fighter and it's it's it captures it in such a way the, the 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 main character was 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 down and out he set up his manager sets up a fight he knows he's going to lose he bets against him it's just it's just it's 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 that it's that everything uh, <laughs> the van damme move lionheart which he actually did is like take the fall stay down it's kind of the same idea and it set that up for for every movie it, it, it made an archetype uh, uh for the boxing theme that a manager is going to screw the fighter uh it's a classic it's um I, I, I watched it again last year because I, I was looking up, like I guess I'm mm -hmm. looking this up. Um, I feel like what's that movie where the Indian kid plays the game and everything leading up to it was up to, was meant for his life. So he had the answers. Uh, I'll think. Break. Of it. You know what? 
I like these classics too, but I'm gonna stick with Cinderella, man. I, you know, you th there's movies such as Somebody Up There Likes Me, the Rocky Graziano story that good one. could good also one. be a good one. Uh, there's an Elvis movie. Speaking of old school movies, there's an Elvis movie. I think Kid Galahad it was called <laughs> uh, about, about boxing as well. You know, uh, where Elvis is a, a, a boxer. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Cinderella, man. It's a true story too, you know, and and it's it's tough to uh, I just, although the setup with, with guys getting screwed, I mean that that that's a realistic sense regardless. But I think the uh, uh, with Cinderella, Great. man, being a true story, it really come holds true. Hey, ref, have you have you seen the setup? I have not. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna you got something to do this weekend. But it's uh it's a phenomenal. I'm still sticking with the setup. That's that that's the movie. I mean, it's one of those movies when you watch, especially if you know boxing, like it, it pulls on your heartstrings. Similar to Cinderella, man. Um, but it was so ahead of its its time, and it just it it said it told us something that we never knew that was a major part of the sport, um, and I think it just set the tone for so many boxing movies after that. That understanding that managers are fighters. Chris, I appreciate you going back in history, um, but I never saw that movie, so it's hard for me to judge that, <laughs> and I have to hold that against you. And Paulie <laughs> Paulie won that round ten nine, uh, and it's a draw. This oh, fight, that knockdown was a fight. slip. Now I'm going to the commission. <laughs> that knockdown was a slip. I'm the champ. That, that knockdown a was a slip. By, by the way, just in curiosity, I didn't want to do Rocky against uh, Raging Bull because I think you both think Raging Bull is the best boxing movie ever. Am I right? Yeah. I'll yeah. Mean. No, that was that was actually a good caveat, uh, ref. That was that was good. Oh, I just got a, a, a DM from our, our our guy Jim Jim Sorensen. It was Slumdog Millionaire, where everything in his life ah, led up to the yes, moment where yes, he was going to yes. get the. So that, that felt like me just now. I was like, oh, I just did this a year ago in the best movie. And I get to watch this super old movie that nobody's going to see. And it hurt me anyway. But, I mean, there was The Fighter, Million Dollar Baby, The Hurricane. There were, there were Hurricane, a lot of Hurricane's good. Hurricane's like good. Hurricane, and that's a true Hurricane's story, Hurricane's a good film. It's a, it's a good film, man. That's that's great. You know, Joey Giardello sued them and won? Because uh, they made like he got robbed against Giardello, uh, Giardello robbed them. And, uh, oh wow! And, uh, yeah, I heard that. that. I heard that. I mean, there was fights where uh, Carter did get robbed, but the Jardella fight was not one of them. And so he sued them, and he won. <laughs> this guy All right. Like he well, got robbed in that fight. Did you ever see what he looked like? Ruben well, Hurricane Carter? Carter. Yeah, end of his Dude, life. Dude, he was he was jacked. Yeah. He was scary. I've seen footage looking. of the fights. Yeah. He was yeah, in prison. He was, something for, else. he was in prison in my hometown for for a while because I'm from Very, Rawway, Jersey. He was in prison. Ter terrible. He was in prison there. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap this up. This fight is a draw. Um, pa Paul, you did come back, but it wasn't quite enough to eke out the win. So Chris Algieri is the defending champ. Make sure you download the app. We're going to keep doing these sparring sessions. Paulie, um, any before we wrap up, uh, are you going to file another protest? Yeah, I didn't slip. I'm, I mean, I didn't. That wasn't a knockdown. It was a slip. That was a, okay. Was well, a, your your, pro, your protest well, is noted. No, no, you Chris Algieri, any problems the with the decision? Yeah, I mean, it's, I just wish I, I wish that everybody else on this panel was uh, as much of a boxing connoisseur as I am. That you know what? We need, need the movies. fans to judge. We need the fans to judge. We Ooh, need the fans. Gonna, the comments. Gonna, the comments. You put your comments. Who's winning these debates? Put your comments in. Tell tell us who won this one. Okay, yeah. it's a draw. All of them. All of them. Every week. All of them. It's a draw. Uh, I, George I can referee. We need fair, judges. The panel of judges has to be in the comment section. George we're gonna is the wrap referee. it up with Paulie going ballistic. Make sure you download the app. Pro Box TV is your boxing channel, and I'm a good ref and a good judge.